I've been asked more times than I can start to count. Danny, as a software developer with a lot of experience in tech, if you had to start over today, in today's market especially, what would you do? This is gonna be the entire breakdown. It's a little bit longer video, drop a like, bookmark it so you can come back to it, but you're gonna get a lot of value out of this one video. The very first thing I would do, if I'm learning to code for the very first time, I'm just starting out at the beginning, first thing I'm doing, I'm going to freecodecamp.org. I'm a big fan of the website, I talk about it all the time, but within 90 seconds, you're writing your first line of code. The reason why I say this is I genuinely believe motivation and inspiration have expiration dates. They're gonna expire. So the earlier you act on the inspiration, the higher likelihood you're gonna actually stick with this for the long term. Not only that, you're starting with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and I'm not saying that I think front-end development is the way, the truth, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not saying that here. What I am saying is, especially for a lot of people in the beginning of learning how to code, you're really not starting with a lot of background information here. Those early wins with those visual wins can get you very addicted and into the process of building things and creating things and solving problems. So that genuine curiosity starts to peak and you start to really get interested in what you're doing. The very next thing that I'm doing, after getting to JavaScript, I'm not saying you, you completed JavaScript or you really dug deep, but you're in the beginning stages of JavaScript. If my goal is to eventually get a job in tech, especially in the market that I'm within, I'm going to research my market to see what tech stacks are employable. What are companies hiring for? What are they saying that they have problems with in these languages and where's the gap in the market for me to fill? That is the next thing that I'm doing because I can't even begin to tell you the number of people that I run into on the regular basis now that for example, let's say they learn the Mern stack, which is a great stack in certain markets, not all markets. And so you're in a market where Mern stack doesn't necessarily have opportunities. Guess what? I'm talking to people that are like, I've been trying to get a job in tech for three years, four years, five years, and I can't get a single opportunity. Nobody's hiring. But when you look at their tech stack, they're in a market where Java is king, or let's say C sharp.net is king, but here they are, they're using Mern and no one's hiring for it. But there's 30, 40,000 job opportunities open in their market for someone with Java. So that's my next step. I need to come up with my entire roadmap of what to learn. Stop listening to influencers, including myself, that tell you, learn this tech stack, learn that. That's why I don't ever recommend technologies. I always say the same advice, go research the market. I can tell you the most tweetable, likable, reshareable answer in the world, but the reality is every single market is different. So don't take some influencer's advice that's telling you what you wanna hear for a like. Instead, research what companies are hiring for, look at the job descriptions, look at what they're trying to fill, and try and match that as best as possible. You're never gonna match it 100%, but at least get the core competencies down. So if they're saying they need a Java developer that knows Spring, that knows JavaScript, boom, those are the things that you're gonna start hitting so you can get those junior opportunities. Now that I understand what my market is hiring for, that's where step three comes in, I make my roadmap and I start hitting actionable items of what languages I'm gonna learn and which ways and what projects I'm gonna build. Step number four is I would stop reliance upon tutorials guiding me the entirety of the way because that's where a lot of y'all get hung up on. It's good to use a tutorial to build your foundation, but there's a point where your foundation isn't gonna carry you the rest of the way and you need to start building upon it, right? You can only do so many educational items until this becomes a crutch instead of the assistant that it's supposed to be. Step number five is actually building projects that solve a problem. And I know a lot of people say like, well, I don't know what to build. Look, I put out so many of these threads already. I've talked about this for years. You could build anything. You don't gotta cure cancer with code, y'all. No one's expecting you to do that, especially as a junior. But what they are expecting is for you to solve some kind of problem, deliver a solution, and talk about said solution. When you don't do that, you're doing a disservice to yourself. The next thing I'm gonna do after I build projects that solve a problem, I'm gonna really hone in and focus on one specific project that uses and encompasses my entire tech stack that's great for the market, and that project in particular is gonna be one that there's not gonna really be a tutorial on. It's gonna be hell, it's gonna make me wanna flip a table, it's gonna make me wanna pull out my hair. You can see I've already pulled out enough of that. <laughs> but yeah, I, it, it's, it's gonna be a, a nightmare, right? But at the end of it, that is gonna be a project that I'm gonna love talking about in an interview, that an interviewer and a hiring manager is gonna love to hear about. It's gonna showcase my technical ability. It's gonna give me stuff to talk about as far as problems that I've solved and solutions that I've delivered. That's what I'm looking for. The ammunition within the interview process that really showcases my abilities. Now the reality is no one is really gonna hire you based on a project that you make, especially at the junior level, right? There's just so much that you don't know. but. 
it's gonna give you more items to talk about yourself and really showcase what you bring to the conversation. Then the other thing that I'd be doing, and I'd be doing this already at this point, meetups. I'm so big on meetups. Y'all, I don't think I would even be here in tech if it wasn't for amazing communities. You need to be going to as many meetups as humanly possible. Network as much as possible. Now, when I say network, I don't say come in with a PowerPoint slide like, here are three ways that I'm gonna save you 15% or more. That's not gonna happen. What you do wanna do is start building real relationships with people over time because guess what? A lot of the people that are gonna be in your corner advocating for you, they're gonna be individuals that have seen you grow over time. Now, a lot of people, I get hit up for this 20 times a day at this point. Can you mentor me? Can you mentor me? I wish I could mentor everybody, right? And I don't want to come up with some like cheesy, you know, mentorship thing where I'm you're paying, you know, ten thousand dollars for three months or something. I don't want to do that stuff, right? The reality is more often than not, over the years, I have seen more people get mentorship from people that they have built a relationship with and they've seen grow over time than I have seen cold outreach of you just DMing someone who is a complete utter stranger saying, Can you mentor me? It's not gonna work that way. Build real relationships. One quote in particular comes to mind on this, and I've, I've referenced this quote many times, and it's by Chris Rock, and he basically said, anytime I ever ran out of gas on the side of the highway, and I just stood out there with a gas can, hoping somebody would stop, no one ever stopped. But every single time I was pushing the car, on my own, someone would pull over, they would help me push it the rest of the way, or they would drive me to the gas station and bring me back. People want to help people that are working towards something, and they see them actively putting in that effort. It almost incentivizes them and entices them to do that. So by being part of a community, that's a great way for that to happen. So I'd be networking nonstop. I'd be going to all kinds of meetups, and I'd use LinkedIn, of course. I'd be all over LinkedIn, um, any social media platform. But LinkedIn, the access to the quality level of connections that you get, it's no other platform, in my opinion, really comes that close. Even though Twitter, for example, is my largest following, LinkedIn has definitely been my most impactful following. Now, when it comes to job boards and things like that, right, I'd be applying to a lot of jobs, I'd be networking, I'd be advocating for myself in any, any way, shape, or form. But when it comes to job boards in particular, when you go to a job board, they pace to post those jobs. So a lot of people say no one's ever hiring juniors because I don't see the ads. The reality is there's no incentive for most organizations. I'm not going to say all. Oh, I'd say like 90% plus percent. There's no real incentive for them to pay to post it on the Indeed's, LinkedIn jobs, Dice, et cetera. It's not really there. They know once they advertise juniors, they're gonna get thousands of applications without even trying. So most companies end up doing two things. First, they go to their team saying, hey, we're gonna add a junior to the team. Your manager probably gonna be like, do you know anybody? Is there anybody that you'd recommend? Is there anybody that you know that would be like a good fit that we could have a conversation with? That, those referrals really kick in there. The second thing that they do is they post the jobs on their company portal and career pages. That's why I always tell people, don't just check out the LinkedIn's and the Indeed's, check out your local company's career page. That's where they're posting it because it doesn't cost them anything. They're not paying for that. Yeah, sure, they're gonna get less applicants overall, but guess what, overall I guarantee you that if a candidate is going to the career page, they probably have a lot more intuitive knowledge to kind of check that out and go out of their way to find it as opposed to someone who's just hitting LinkedIn easy apply on every single job that comes their way. So while the overall gross of number of applicants may be lower, it's probably gonna be more quality candidates hitting them up in that regard. The other thing that I'd be doing is if I saw that there was a job that I was a great fit for and I, I really matched this up in a big way, I would just check out if the company, let's say Jimmy's Insurance Company, they're hiring for a junior developer, I would just check out Jimmy's Insurance Company on LinkedIn and see if any of the hiring managers have posted about it. And if they did, I would hit them up and be like, hey, I saw that you posted XYZ. I think I'm a great candidate and a great fit for this. I'd love to have a conversation. I hear a couple reasons why I think you know I'm a great fit for this particular role. I, I don't want to do the copy and paste thing and people can see that a mile away you don't want to do that you want your especially think about it your comment or your message has the potential to shift your career why are you cutting corners copying and pasting everything when pretty much everybody can tell we can tell when recruiters are doing it we see all the memes online of people copying pasting their answers and their messages it's very obvious to everybody if we already know it's obvious why are you doing that to yourself and sabotaging your own success the other thing that i would say and this is to give you realisticness, I would give myself permission to take my time. A lot of y'all don't do that, and I get it, it's impatience, et cetera, et cetera. Hell, most of y'all probably didn't watch to this part of the video if I'm being real. The other thing that I would say here, if I'm being completely blunt and honest with you, I do a poll pretty much every single year. And the last year that we did this, I asked the same question, for software developers that landed a job in tech, how long did it take you? The first option is three months. The second option is nine months or longer. The third option is a year to three years, and the fourth option is four years plus, right? How long did it take you from writing your first line of code? Only in the last poll, I think it was 6.2% 
of the total number of respondents, which was over 15,000 between LinkedIn and Twitter, 15,000 ended up saying, I got a job in tech in three months. That means almost 94% of the time, it took them nine plus months or longer with a heavy amount of the votes being one to three years. And what's wild to me is the sheer amount of comments that came from juniors saying, I can't believe how long it's taken some people. It's totally shifted the way that I think. And I think that's really important here because so many people are trying to rush this process because they just think, I'm supposed to get a job in three months. Everybody talks about three months. Everybody talks about six months. The reality is it's going to take you a little bit longer. It took me longer than three months. It's, it took. I, I've only met one person in real life that landed a job from the first line of code that they wrote to landing an opportunity in three months. And that person himself told me it's because I knew the owner of the company. So you need to give yourself a little bit of credit and slack here. Learn your stuff, apply your skills. If you don't get it in three months, that's okay. If you don't get it in a year, that's okay too. But just keep learning and applying and growing and building and just keep growing your skill set. The one problem that I see with a lot of people is they'll talk about how they've been learning how to code for three years, four years. But when you look at the quality of their projects or the number of things that they've built, it's so small. When you tell me three, four years, I'm expecting a very different level of skill set than someone who's been learning how to code for three months, six months, nine months. So if you're at the three, four year mark, you need to go ahead and make sure you're really applying yourself but if you've been off and on and if you just build some one thing here then you take off for six months it's not the same three years last tip i want to give you is when it comes to your job applications your resumes your linkedins your projects the biggest area of value comes in in how you describe your projects i was on a call last night with a, a group of students in the cohort that we're doing here uh, in dallas and one of the students has been, they recently graduated the degree, they're trying to get a job in tech, they can't get a single call back, and when we look at the resume, it became very obvious why, but the big issue is, and a lot of juniors don't realize this, and I didn't realize this at the beginning too, if I'm being honest, is it's really hard for someone who's reading this paper to conceptualize the problems that you solved or the achievements that you had. And so when you just brush past it, they don't have the background information that you possess on said projects or on said accomplishments, on said awards. You need to explain that. So in the mindset of someone who doesn't know who you are, doesn't know your background or anything about you, in that mindset, can they walk away from reading that piece of paper or that LinkedIn profile really knowing everything about you? So try to audit yourself and remove yourself saying, I'm now auditing, not Danny, but Jimmy's LinkedIn profile, Jimmy's resume, Jimmy's explanation of his project. And I don't know anything about Jimmy, but by reading this description, I now know everything that they did in this. If you can walk away feeling that way, then you did a good job. If not, reapply some effort here and finesse and make that a little bit better so that way people kind of understand where you're coming from. This video was a lot. I get it. You may have to watch this a couple times. That's cool too. But believe me when I say this, you absolutely got this.